Need to breathe and multiplied on Rima. 20 minutes past 10. Well, it is my pleasure to have Edu Drents in the Rima studio this morning. Probably best known for his role as Daniel Potts in Shortland Street, but currently starring in the six-part drama When We Go to War, which begins screening this Sunday on TV1. Uh, Edu, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Uh, I'm quite excited to have Daniel Potts in the studio. Do you still get that a lot? You see people coming up to you? Daniel! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's been a while now, but yeah, you do. And that's, that's the, the beauty about the Shortland Street. It is such a, like, it's the background music to, uh, to New Zealand in many ways, you know. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, people do still recognize me for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is a huge um, uh, sort of launching ground, isn't it, for New Zealand actors? And there are some Shortland Street actors who have gone on to do incredible things. Absolutely, absolutely. And the reason that is is because it's such a, um, a high turnaround, high volume show. So every day you're doing a whole bunch of scenes like you know anywhere from you know 10 to 20 scenes and and it's five days a week and so as an actor you're kind of getting this experience on set every day uh, sharpening your craft you know and and uh, there aren't many other opportunities in this country or in the world where you get that intensity of uh of exposure to, to, to kind of performing yeah yeah when we go to war uh, it looks absolutely incredible thanks man and, i mean new zealand drama is becoming better and better isn't it and just yeah, this looks like absolutely. one of the best things we've ever produced to absolutely. me absolutely and and you know we've got this knack for kind of like creating brilliance off the smell of an oily rag and you know it's not a massive budget and it's a period piece so and that they're normally very expensive to produce but um you know the team on it did a fantastic job and gavin strawn is you know he spent like three years writing it and and um you know and peter berger the director is, in, is incredible does does really good stuff and uh and uh you know robin skull's producer is you know part of uh i guess you know she's a matriarch of the industry here you know so yeah. so great team on it and um and i'm looking forward to seeing it i haven't actually seen it but it um from the snippets that i've caught it uh, you know it, it's looking good and and we had a lot of t lot of fun filming it you know so you got to trust the process really yeah yeah so what is the story when we go to war i mean so what is it all about yeah so essentially it, uh, um when we go to war follows it's six parts and each each part follows a letter right either to the war or from from the war right so either from home um to the family and so you're kind of following this main family this the smiths right and um and i play um charles smith in the family who's a second eldest son <clears throat> excuse me and he's a he's a captain in the army and so uh but yeah every episode follows a letter so it's quite a unique concept and uh um but uh my character um charles he's a he essentially is a personification of the, the prevailing attitude towards the war um, during the time of, of New Zealanders. So starts off very, uh, very kind of chipper about the whole thing, very mm. optimistic about the war, as as a lot of Kiwis were, because the only experience we had of war was the Boer War, and you know, and obviously we went in in the eleventh hour and and uh, and demolished uh, demolished uh, in South Africa, and then you know came back and felt really positive about war. And yeah. so so Gallipoli happens, and we kind of go over there thinking it's a bit of big adventure for these boys, and then kind of, you know, the rest is history and yeah. I mean, you mentioned the Boer War there. I mean, that's sort of interesting for your family because you are South African yeah, uh, by descent, uh, but live in New Zealand. You sound like a Kiwi. Uh, Absolutely. You've been here for a long time. Uh, yeah, in all, in all accounts purposes, I am definitely a Kiwi. Um, yet there's that small part of me that uh, that recognises my heritage and where I came from. And, and, you know, the Boer War is a sensitive topic to many South Africans, you know, because, mm. um, you know, there are definitely two sides of the story. So, uh, you, you're right. It's a, it's a. It was an interesting perspective to have in the whole in yeah. the whole thing. But the parents were cool with it. There yeah, was, there was no family <laughs> feuds. No, 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 no. We're talking again. Which is <laughs> no, no. So, uh, but you know, at the same time, recognize how incredibly um, fortunate I was to get the opportunity to tell such a unique story for um, our history. You know, as 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 speaking as a Kiwi, and uh, and uh, you know, and that will be something we'll forever have with us now. This when we go to war, the six part series that tells. That's that part of our, our, our history, which is, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, obviously you have to research for a role like that. The story of when we go to war is based around the Gallipoli conflict mm. and conflicts in Egypt, I think, mm -hmm. as well. I mean, how has that changed your perspective on war and on what the Anzacs did? Firstly, like it kind of just historically gave me a much better broader understanding of what actually went on so firstly the you know the fact that Gallipoli was only for nine months um in my mind it was always like, like you know the whole war was kind of but it was yeah. only a short period of a of a much bigger war and then we went to the western front and you know saw some significant casualties up there as well so it was a, a, a small part but a very defining part in in the war so so historically it gave me much more of a padding um or you know of uh and kind of filled out my knowledge, but also the, 
the other thing was just um, for me that just kind of getting a grasp of what families must have gone through. You know, these young boys, like some were 16, 17, had lied about their age to get to the war because it was this big adventure that were, they were going on, you know, and then um, and then their families wouldn't hear anything from them for a while. And there was, um, you know, a cut off in the media for what, what was allowed to be printed and all that stuff. So, so life went on, you know, mm-hmm. here people were kind of like having relationships and moving on and trading and doing business as usual. And there was this great big war going on on the other side of the world, but we were just living normal lives, you know, and, um, and yet these, these young men were dying and suffering and kind of, um, you know, in the depths of despair. And at the very same time, there was, and even in that, um, on the, on the front, there were these glimmers of hope and these beautiful relationships established and this camaraderie and, and then just seeing the beauty of humanity still come through in the midst of, you know, some pretty grave and desperate situations. So mm. do you think that's going to change the way Anzac Day will roll for you and, and your family in the in the future? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely given me, given me as you mentioned before, because um, cause I'm South African, I wasn't deeply connected to Anzac Day mm. um, in the past. Having gone through this experience, I am so much more thankful for for the sacrifices people have made, um, and also just really can identify more with um, with why we call ourselves Kiwis now. Do you know what I mean? And that, and because it was such a unique kind of not separating factor, but kind of identifying factor in in our relationship with with the British and with the Empire. You know what I mean? And yeah, so for me, it's it's it will definitely carry a special place, and we'll be going down to. You know, to the domain and um, doing the dawn parade, and and there are some some really cool things happening this year. You know, there are some um, like illuminate, which is there at the museum as well. They're kind of um, projecting some images on the, yeah. on the museum um, from when we go to from the show, and also yeah. some historical pieces. And you know, so um, we'll definitely be celebrating. Um, yeah, in a, in a different, more significant way. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, just what you said then. They'll be playing some some images and some sh- some footage from the show. Mm. Um, I guess that becomes sort of an amazing archive as well, like of New Zealand history, what you guys have done. It's drama, yeah. but it is still a historical account of what it must have been like for Absolutely. Kiwis. Absolutely. Yeah. Abs- and that, therein I see such a, um, such a gift, you know, for me as an actor that I was able to be part of this um, memento that we as New Zealanders will have now. Like, you know, exactly. It's an archive of, of something beautiful and something unique um, that tells our story, you know, that that my kids will watch, hopefully, and, you know, and let's just hope it's good. But, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but, uh, you know, it's uh, it definitely, uh, yeah, it's definitely a very unique gift that we have now. Mm. Mm. Uh, tell us, when can we tune in? It all kicks off this weekend. Yeah, so we've got a double feature on tw- on 26th, um, so two, two, uh, the first two parts, which mm. is... Uh, which would be cool to get it um get it going get it kicking off and uh and then uh, yeah I think every Sunday from there on in all right mm. awesome Edo thanks so much for coming in looking forward to it when we go to war.